What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit, this is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash malicious compliance. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode. This story's called, You Don't Want Me In Your Class? Okay. Okay, so this took place a long time ago. I think it was in 2009. I was 14 years old, and for context, we live in a country that's not very familiar with English, especially in 2009. At this period, almost nobody used English in their daily life, so no song translations, all the media in our native language. This resulted in really poor English lessons. We were learning since we were 11 years old, and we were studying simple stuff. For my part, I was always interested in languages, and I was traveling for sport. As I was training better and started to do more international kayak competitions, this resulted in me not only learning but using English for three years. At that point, I already read two Harry Potter books in English, so I can say I was really bored in English class. I had little time to do my homework because I was training a lot, and boy, we had a lot of homework. I was studying sciences, math, English, German, none of them being my native language, and art, and this resulted in a lot of stuff to do after class. So when the year started, I especially chose a place at the back of the classroom for the English lessons. Usually in English, the teacher gives an exercise, waits for everybody to finish it, then asks a student to resolve the beginning of the exercise. If he does not know, she goes to ask the next student, etc until all the exercises are solved. This permitted me to resolve the exercise in 5 minutes and do my homework during 15 minutes while listening to the answers or correcting in 5 minutes with all the correct answers written on the blackboard. Not to brag, but to me, it was really easy and I was not correcting a lot of my first answers. And you may ask, how did I do when she asked me to answer? Well, my answers were ready, so it was easy. I had been doing this for years with several English teachers, and as I was not disturbing the class, none of them were annoyed by that. But her? She did not like it. So the first time she had noticed was in the middle of the year. I was stuck on a math problem and I had not followed how far she was in the exercise and what she asked me. So of course I asked her to repeat the question. And I think that's the first time she has looked at my desk. Her face was priceless. I had two different exercise sheets, three mathematical formula sheets, a pile of draft sheets filled with calculations, a lot of color pens, a ruler, and a calculator, while her exercises were on a single sheet and I should have an English book open to help me do the exercise. Where is your English book? Oh, I have it. It's in my bag. Why don't you have it out in front of you? Oh, I don't need it. Obviously you do, as you cannot answer my question. But, and what are you doing anyway? Put all that useless stuff in your bag and open your English book. So, being non-confrontational, I obliged for the rest of the lesson. It was boring. The next lesson, I really needed to do my homework and I did not want to lose that much time as I did during the last lesson. So, as always, I started silently. I decided to do small homework, the type that only needs one sheet of paper so she would not notice. But she did, and she got pissed. She asked me once again to put that useless stuff away, so I decided to do exactly what she asked. I put her English book and sheet in my bag. She shouted at me and sent me to the headmaster with an explanation note. The headmaster is the one supposed to punish you in our schools, for example by giving detention, but just before I closed the classroom door, she made a last mistake. She shouted, And if my lesson does not please you, you aren't forced to come to my class. Well, before that, I was. I went to the headmaster, he asked a couple of questions, and, as he knew my training solution, he did not give me detention, he just asked me to apologize to the teacher. And here finally comes the malicious compliance. I wrote a small letter stating, I am sorry I implied that the English book is stupid. It is a well-written reference book that may be useful to 12-year-old students. Petty, but relieving. Before the next English lesson, I put the letter on my desk and left before she arrived. 
I went to a room where students without a teacher can study calmly under the supervision of a school employee. Therefore, I was not doing anything against the rules of the school. If I was not under the supervision of a teacher, I had to be there. And this was the perfect place to do my homework. Of course, after 15 minutes, I get disturbed by a student of my class who states that she asked me to come back to class. I answered I was busy and she gave me the right not to come. That everybody heard her and if she wants to revoke that, she can talk about it with my head teacher or with the headmaster. The student left and the end of the hour was quiet. Few days passed and, of course, I'm asked to go to the headmaster's office. And she is there, my head teacher is there, the headmaster is there, and, to my surprise, my mother is there. My mom is also a teacher in the school, a PE teacher, and she heard what happened and did not want to miss that. OP, please have a seat. Is this going to be long? We have a German lesson that I don't want to miss. See, OP is always like that. Don't worry, OP, you are excused from missing your lessons. So, can you explain why you don't go to English classes anymore? Well, I don't learn anything there, and I have homework to do, as you may know it. My head teacher was the sciences teacher. She gave a lot of homework. You could do it at home like everyone else! Isn't that why it's called homework? She is training two to four hours per day, and I can assure you she is also doing her homework at home. Do you really need this extra time to do your homework? Yes. Four hours per week. It's a lot. I don't understand why you did not have this problem before. Because I was already doing them during the English lesson. English teacher just never noticed because I was not disturbing the class. I see. There is no way she is doing her homework in my classroom. This classroom is for English only. I'll do them in the study room then. You allowed me not to come to your class. I don't see why there's a problem. Mom smiling. Indeed, I don't see the problem. But the exam... Oh, don't worry about your exam. I'll still succeed. But we'll be asking for an external jury if English teachers acting like this. This is something you can do in my country if we have a suspicion of a non-correct teacher. Well, as I see it, not going to the English class is not helping you succeed on the English exam. So this would be your choice and your risk. If you make this choice, you may not come back on your decision and complain if you fail. I know. I'll check with the secretary if we can make some kind of official paper for this. Maybe we'll be happy to have her parents' signature as well, Mom. Mom trusting me? With pleasure. Head teacher, would you agree to this decision as you know OP better than me? I don't know how she does in English, but she is really working hard in sciences and I think we can trust her decision making for herself. I would be disappointed to see her homework not be turned in on time, and it is her English exam after all. But... And I don't think you'll need an external jury, as I will reread OP's English exam myself after correction. You agree, English teacher? I guess so. Then it is settled. Have a nice day. It is his way of asking us to leave. And like that, the end of the year went smoothly. I had more time to do my homework and I succeeded on her exam. That must have felt pretty cool to um, just have special conditions made for you because you're already ahead of everyone else in terms of at least something, right? This kind of reminds me of sixth grade. So in sixth grade, there were two math classes you could be in. There's regular math and there was advanced math. The regular sixth grade math class had a green book, while the advanced class had a red book. Red is my favorite color, so I really wanted the red book, and so I tried really hard on a math test and I aced it, I didn't miss a single question. And so I went up to my math teacher and I was like, hey, can I get the red book? And he's like, how'd you do on your last test? And he's like, oh wait, you aced it, didn't you? I remember that. And so all excited, I was like, yeah. And so he, he got me the red book and I did well for a bit, but then I ended up not doing well at all. <laughs> but it was worth it because I got the cool book. This story's called, well, if you really want me to wait until after roll call, Advance warning, this will involve a bloody nose, so for those squeamish at such things, you might want to give this one a skip. When I was 12, my family moved from the south, where it was regularly something like 100% humidity practically year-round, to the arid southwest, where 10% humidity can feel like a muggy day once you're used to the desert. Needless to say, my sinuses did not appreciate this and I was regularly cursed with bloody noses once or twice a week. Thankfully, I've long since stopped having them, though. 
In freshman year of high school, so about age 14, my school required us to take a foreign language class. The only languages they offered were French and Spanish, and I decided on French. I'll call my teacher Mrs. B. No, it's not because I didn't like her, but because B was the first initial of her last name. Despite this story, she actually ended up being one of my all-time favorite teachers. And while I don't remember much French, I genuinely enjoyed her classes. Cue the first day, and I'm heading to French class. I hadn't met any of my teachers until this day, including Mrs. B, so, of course, I feel the now familiar sensation of an impending bloody nose. I do my best to pinch my nostrils shut with my fingers, but the bell's about to ring for the start of the class. I don't have time to run to the bathroom and stupidly don't have any tissues on me. So I drop my bag at an available desk and head up to talk to Mrs. B. Hey Mrs. B, I'm sorry but I've got a bloody nose and need to go to the bathroom. I'm about to call roll call in a couple of minutes, it can wait until I'm done. Can not I just tell you I'm here and you mark me down so I can go? No, no, it's not done that way. I need to do the roll call in order. Are you sure? Yes, it's okay. It'll only take a few minutes. Now, if you've ever had a bloody nose, you know how unpleasant a few minutes can be. I go and take my seat, and my friend, who is well aware of the issue and was not expecting me to stay in the room, gives me a what the fuck? look. I just shrug and mumble, she told me to wait for roll call. Finally, the bells ring, and after a minute or two, Mrs. B calls a class to order, and roll call begins. My last name is near the middle of the alphabet, so I really don't have that long to wait, but Mrs. B speaks English as her third language, with the first being French, and the second one I don't recall. So there are quite a few names she can't pronounce, and she takes the time with each one to make sure she's getting them right, which I am dreading. Because I have an unusual first name, people rarely get it right, even after correcting them multiple times. In addition, she insists everyone to raise their right hand when they answer here. Guess which hand is holding my nose shut? Yeah. Finally, she gets to my name. OP. I raise my left hand. Here. No, speak up and use your right hand. But my nose. Right hand, and am I pronouncing your name correct? No, but come on, OP, right hand up and tell me how you say your name. Uh, I raise my right hand. I try to say my name. I'm going to put this next part in a spoiler blocking thing because it was... Uh, the shirt I was wearing was pretty much ruined, and the look on her face was so incredibly disgusted and horrified that I couldn't help laughing, which in retrospect probably didn't help matters. I asked if I could go to the bathroom now, and she managed to stammer out a, Yes. I told her I'd stop by the office and call home to get a new shirt brought in. This was in the dark ages before cell phones, and she replied that it was fine. I found out later that it was a misunderstanding. Between my muffled speech thanks to holding my nose and trying not to swallow, and her sometimes mishearing English words clearly, she thought I was saying that I had a runny nose, not a bloody nose. I took French too the next year as well, and we still laughed about it. Though she never did manage to say my name properly. So I have no idea what a bloody nose is like, because I've never had one. Obviously, I've had bloody boogers before, and I've like accidentally scratched the inside of my nose before, but I've never actually had a bloody nose. I wonder how that feels. Does it hurt? Does it just feel like water coming out of your nose? What, what is it? This story's called No Beans. First time poster, meb, etc. Not sure if this exactly fits, but here we go anyway. Years ago, I worked in a childcare center in the one to two year old room. All the food was made by a gourmet food company and brought in daily. Some was good. Some was so bad, I'm not sure if it was really food. One kid was a vegetarian, and he had a lot of the same food over and over again. The poor kid, who I will call John Smith, hated beans and refused to eat if there were beans. I went through the proper channels in an attempt to tell the chef slash owner of the food company not to send beans for the kid. This included emails, phone calls, even a fax. Everything was ignored, and when I called, they told me they had no record to say I'd raise the issue. Lies. 
They suggested that I leave a note in one of the styrofoam boxes the food came in. Again, nothing changed despite me talking to the delivery people who dropped off the food and picked up the empty boxes as they got reused. I had jack of it, so I got a permanent marker and wrote on the sides and bottom of the box given to my room, no beans for John Smith, over and over again, at least 20 times. On the lid, I wrote, no beans for John Smith. That means no baked beans, lima beans, green beans, lima beans, chickpeas, cannellini beans, etc. No beans whatsoever. Call me if you do not understand no beans. It worked, and it only took three months. Moral of the story, to get your message through, you only need to go so over the top and destroy a delivery box with instructions. <sighs> Okay, most of those beans I can understand not enjoying, but baked beans? That's basically a dessert. Like, honestly, how do you not like baked beans? They are so delicious. Everyone in the comments, tell me your favorite bean dish. I guess mine would either be hummus or maybe baked beans, as I just said, because baked beans are amazing, and so is hummus. Oh, Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.